Hello and welcome to the AFL Riverina Football and Netball Show. I'm your host, Hannah Maguire. Well, local footy finals are in full swing this weekend. We'll talk about all the big games in the RFL and Farrah League. Prime 7 sports reporter Matt Kelly and Shane Buchanan from AFL Riverina will talk about their predictions for the Farrah League's clear medal. But first, let's chat to Stephen Stapleton ahead of this weekend's Wagga District Football uh, Grand Finals. Uh, we'll first talk about um, the game of, of, of the round, which will be the under 14s, um, 10.30, Wagga Tigers versus Eastern Hawks. Tell us who you think will win that one there. I think that'll be a very, a very tough game. I think they're both sides are very physical. Um, Wagga Tigers should probably get across the line, but having said that, uh, East Wagga have got some very, very good players that they'll need to be very mindful of, but I would, I would expect Wagga Tigers to win that game. Okay, uh, under 12s, it, it kicks off at 12, 10 past 12. Um, Turvey Park versus Wagga Swans. Uh, I think Turvey Park in a very, very close one. I think they won their way into the grand final in the first week. They finished minor premier and they, they won by a point to get into the grand final. So I expect that'll be a very fiercely fought contest as well. All right. Uh, the under 13s at 1.30, Wagga Swans versus East Lakes and Mangapa. Um, Wagga Swans, I think, we should win that quite comfortably. They haven't been beaten all year. They're a very good side, very well-rounded unit and uh, fairly polished outfit. So I think they would win. Okay, and in the under 15s uh, at quarter past three, which is probably the main game of the day, Turvey Park versus Wagga Tigers. Uh, I think Turvey Park would probably be going in as a slight favourite. They, they won by five or six goals in the um, semi final a couple of weeks ago. They finished minor premier. Uh, Wagga Tigers only lost two games all year, and both of those have been against Turvey Park. So I'd be tipping Turvey in a very, very close one. Okay, that wraps up the boys. We'll go to the girls now in the netball. The under 11s, they kick off at 10.30. Now this one's out of Wagga Tigers and the Wagga Swans. Uh, I think the Swans would be very difficult to beat. They've been undefeated all season, so you would you would think they would probably uh, be going in as favourites at least and uh, very promising to get the job done. All right, uh, the under 13s, the Rock versus Coolerman. Um, it's been a very, very solid competition all year. I think the Rock were first into the grand final um, in a closely fought match, so they'll probably be very hard to beat also. Okay, uh, and in the, in the under 15s at quarter past uh, one, Turvey Park versus uh, East Lakes Mangapla. Uh, Turvey Park finished uh, minor premiers and they were the first team into the grand final. I would expect they would be very hard to beat. Having said that, I think East Lakes are a very, very strong side and they've, they've got, uh, got a very good squad together at the right time of the year. Okay, um, just tell us a bit about the season and, and how, it, how it's been and, and what are the positives out of it this year? Yeah, we've had several positives. We had uh, the introduction of a Friday night under 14 competition um, that gave uh, a lot of boys the opportunity to play football that probably wouldn't have otherwise had that chance. Um, they also had the opportunity to play under Robertson Oval on the lights, um, which was definitely an attraction. Plus the netball, they were expanding netball competition. There was two extra grades put in for netball to accommodate uh, the, the need for young girls to be playing, playing sport. Okay, too easy. Well, thanks for your time today, Steve. Uh, now, make sure you get out there and support the kids. It's all that happens from 9am. It starts with the Oz Kickers at Robertson Oval. Shane Buchanan from AFL Riverina joins us in the studio now to talk everything finals. We'll start with the RFL, Shane. Now, the qualifying final on Saturday is between Gernmain and Colin Gully. Both of these sides had tremendous wins on the weekend. Uh, Ken Main were the first to crack the minor premiers, Coolerman. Uh, who do you think is going to win this one? Yeah, Hannah, it should be a really good game. I suppose if you look at form in recent weeks, Gamma and Grongor Manong had a good win against Coolman, as you, as you stated there. Um, uh, and them and Coolman and Gully, I suppose, are the teams to beat, I think, in this competition. Uh, with Colin Gully, they had a good good win against Turvey Park last week. Uh, Mark Gevitt kicked 90, 98, ended up on 98 goals. Um, kicked poorly again, Mark. He missed the opportunity. So, um, but look, going into this game, you know, where, where it's going to be won and lost is in the midfield. Um, Germain is exceptional in there. Jacob Olsen was a uh, was outstanding last week against Coolerman, and he'll have a great battle with Josh Mieselback. In regards to the midfield battle, like uh, Germain, we relied on Coach Kotzer, Cole Hagen, uh, Curtis Steele to lead from the front. Colin Gully were looking for Chris Gordon, uh, Brad Aiken, um, Curtis Allen also in the midfield there to try and win as much ball as possible. Look, this is going to be a fantastic game. The Naranja Sports Ground will suit both grounds in regards to both play a uh, free-flowing and um, run the ball, kicking long to a key forward. Um, look, I'm going to go with GMA in this particular game. I just think uh, their form last week, they'll have a lot of confidence out of that particular game. They've got the wood over Colin Gully this year, so I'm going to go with the Lions over the Demons in that particular one. 
Okay. And on Sunday, the elimination final, who do you think uh, will have their last chance at finals in this one? I mean, um, Wagga Tigers and Mango, they both had uh, wins at the weekend, but they weren't very, you know, overly convincing wins, I guess you could say. Yeah, good point. The games at Ma are over. Look, that ground should suit both clubs as well. Both clubs like to run the ball. Both are younger teams, I suppose, in regards to that. If we look for their form during the season, I think Wagga Tigers have had the wood over Mango this year in both games. Um, I know one particular game early in the year, Mango Plus should have perhaps been and Wagga Tigers at Robertson Oval, but didn't get over the line there. So, look, Mango will go in a bit of confidence in this particular game. As you said, their form hasn't been crash hot. Um, I just think that uh, Mango also may have some injury concerns as well, which won't be, uh, which will be a negative for them. But, I mean, it's finals time. They'll need to play who they can and the fittest players. But looking for a winner here, I'm going to go with Wagga Tigers. I just think perhaps... Um, their um, younger players are um, you know, really coming to the fore. In, in the likes of Dougal ha Howard and Charlie Bance, um, Sean Flanagan, these type of players, I think they can um, do the job and get over Manga Plough. OK, and you, I guess we'll have to find out on Sunday. And in the Farrow League on Saturday, the semi-final, it's at Mar Overall as well. Uh, it's between The Rock and Tomorrow. This one's going to be a very, very close game, isn't it, Shane? Yeah, one of the biggest games of the year in the Farrow League. There's no doubt about that. I mean, these two teams realistically are, are, are the are the teams that are going to, these two teams, I think the Premier's going to come out of these two, I think, the way their form's been all year. The Rock had the last week off, so they'll be, they'll be, um, they'll be fresh. Tomorrow, they played the Jets last week. Um, I was quite impressed with Tamora. I mean, uh, they're a big team. There's no doubt about that. Compare them to the Northern Jets. The other positives I like is that they're um, they're obviously got a great um, a great coach. They're uh, well coached, uh, good team structures. But I think the real positive thing is they move the ball really well. They they um, um, switch it as much as they possibly. They run and run and create. And the other real positive out of it is is the former Scott Blackwell up forward. He attacks the ball as a full forward should. He leads straight up the middle of the ground. He hits the pack hard. So so the blokes can get front and square and Mark Kruger kicked six last week. Well, a lot of that work was from Scott Blackwell making a contest up in the forward line. So look, looking for a winner here. Um, look, I think oh, the grapevine Tamora may have a few injury concerns going into this particular match. So I'm going to go with Tamora. I think their form was outstanding last week and I think they're going to get over the Rock Magpies. Okay, and um, yeah, as you mentioned before, the Northern Jets very disappointing against Tamora last week, and I know the boys would have been very disappointed with that performance. They play Mara this weekend in the elimination final out at the Rock. Um, Mara, they, they've beaten the Jets once this year to one apiece, I think. Um, who do you think will get over in this one? I mean, finals, they do change everything. Yeah, they do, Hannah, and I, I suppose if we look at the form last week, the Northern Jets were really disappointing, as you said. I mean, um, it, it, I suppose they lost, I suppose, the way they lost, I suppose. They sort of didn't um, put any pressure on Tamora whatsoever, which was disappointing. And, and no doubt Jamie Grant will be working on that during the week. Whereas Marla really played with passion and pride. You could really see that they were doing their damnedest to try and beat East Wagga. And in the end, they did do that. They had a really good attitude, I suppose, going the way they played. They had a really good attitude. Look, with the Jets, they got their opportunity to rebound. And that's the good thing about footy. But after um, Sunday, there is no um, opportunity to rebound. Look, I'm going to go with the Jets. I think they've perhaps been, you know, the form team all year. They've had a they've had a hiccup last week, but I think they can go in, into this particular game with a bit more confidence. And I think it's going to be a very close game, but I'll just go with the Jets over the Bombers. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your tips. Shane Buchanan from AFL Riverina there. Make sure you've got plenty of games to go and watch on the weekend, so make sure you get out there and support your team. Shane and Prime 7 sports reporter Matt Kelly join us in the studio now to talk about their predictions for the Farrah League clear medal this year. Now, boys, who do you think will take out the best and fairest for the league? Well, Hannah, we might just go through the clubs individually and we might start with the Rock they finished on top. Uh, Mike Kennedy from the Rock, I think Dale Hugo may be up there this year. He uh, was runner-up last year in 2012. He's always polled well in the clear medal in the past, so that's my, my candidate who I think uh, may have a chance of winning it. Yeah, I, I really like David Peeper. He's had a consistent season. Uh, always racks up good numbers in uh, in every game, and uh, look, Luke Webb's kicked plenty of goals as well. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he uh, if he nails a couple of three uh, three votes in a few of the games. We're talking about a team that's lost two games for the whole year, so we should have plenty of boys from the Rock polling votes. I, I would have thought. And tomorrow they they'll be up there as well with their votes. Yeah, Chris Block won it last year, um, a worthwhile uh, winner as well, no doubt about that. And his form's been pretty rock solid as well. So, look, my candidate there for the rock, I think Tamora, uh, sorry, um, Chris Block at Tamora. 
Alrighty, and Matt, yeah, do you agree? Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I've been really impressed with Blocky yet again this season. Um, having come off a dominant year last year, uh, like I said, really liked his year. Kruger's kicked uh, plenty of bags of goals, so no doubt he'll be in the uh, in the vote somewhere. And, and Adam Reid's another one I think uh, had a really good year as well. So uh, he might surprise uh, a little bit being an on-baller. The on-ballers tend to uh, poll pretty well, so we might see his name right up there. Yeah, the Northern Jets, I mean, they've came le leaps and bounds compared to what they were last year. Um, surely a few of those players should, or those boys should be up there too. Yeah, Dane Keynes, he's come across from Canberra. He's been an on-baller and has had a real impact at the club. So, look, I, my personal thing, I think Dane would probably be one that'd be fairly well up there for the Jets. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, um, he took out the best and fairest for the club. So, if that's anything to go by. Oh, well, that gives you more, um, more support to um, perhaps um, suggest Dane, yeah, be right up there. Uh, Michael Foster's the obvious one for me. Key forward, um, presents well up there, kicks plenty of goals. Uh, had another really consistent season, I would expect, in terms of the Jets players, that he would be one of the one of the boys that performs really well on the night. We'll quickly touch on Mara. Um. Yeah, Mara Brad Turner, I think, is uh, is a standout. He's a, got a phenomenal leak and take a hanger. There's no doubt about that. And he's play, taken plenty this year. So look, Brad will uh, is a spectacular player, I suppose. So he should. Uh, be catching the umpire's eye. So oh, I think Brad Turner will be a candidate there for Mara. Right, Matt, Eastern Hawks, who do you think in that team? Yeah, look, the boys have got a couple out there from uh, East Walker Karingal. I mean, Nick Hull in the ruck has had a really dominant year. He's been probably one of the key big men across the league um, throughout the season. Uh, I would expect uh, with the number of hit-outs he's had, and he's also gone forward and taken some really good marks in games as well, that, that uh, he should poll well. Right, we'll head over to Collie Ambly and you can't really go past captain coach Mitch Carroll, can you, Shane, in this one? Yeah, um, Mitch wasn't captain coach this year particularly. He was Gare Main, oh, sorry. But sorry. Uh, Andrew <laughs> McGowan uh, was coach this year, Hannah. But no, you're right, Mitch is a leader. There's no doubt about that. And he's led from the front out there this year. You know, once again, as Matt said, an on-baller worked really hard uh, for the club this year. And he'll be up there um, amongst it as well. And probably another one there would be probably Simon Mackey, key positional player. Um, got the hard job each week. And um, yeah, he should be a real candidate there as well. OK, North Wagga, Matt? You've got a, a pick here? Yeah, look, I really, I've really liked Nathan Dowdle's season. Uh, captain coach on baller. I mean, the guy just racks up the footy every week. And it's not so much how many times he gets it, but what he does with it as well. Uh, a couple of really courageous acts throughout the season. Um, no doubt that won't have been missed by the umpires. So there's a guy I, I think will be uh, right up there come, come the count. OK, and you can't really take too much out of CSU. I mean, do you think many of those boys will get any votes? Or? Oh, Wade Archibald's a non-baller. Um, in the same vein as Mitch Carroll and the likes of Peeper and that, he gets his head over the ball a lot. He's a real hard worker and an on-ball there. Um, sort of um, a real gritty player. So he'll, he'll attract umpires' votes as well. And Clint Shields is a multiple goal kicker. Week in, week out, he's the guy kicking, you know, fives and sixes and three goals sort of thing. So he's a, their avenue to go. So he, he should um, get some votes as well, though he has had some injuries throughout the year. Right, we'll quickly go your three, two, ones. Uh, who do you think will we'll take out the best and fairest? Well, the clear medal, I'm going to go three. Oh, my three, uh, Dale Hugo, I think he's going to win it. Uh, Runner-up last year, I think he, he hopefully can make the next step. Chris Block uh, won it last year. He's got to be up there again. And the third one is, uh, we didn't mention much about, was Tim Davidson from East Wagga, a former Ainsley player. He's been in an outstanding four more years, so they're my three. Oh, I've gone again with a proven vote getter. I think Chris Block will poll very well. Um, another uh, superb season uh, uh, from Blocky. I think he'll be right up there. I've actually thrown in Clint Taylor to come second. I think uh, the uh, captain coach of Mara has just had another fantastic season down at centre half back. Really held uh, held their defence together. And as I mentioned before, I'm pretty keen on Nathan Dowdle from North Wagga. I think he'll be he'll be right up there as well. OK, thanks for the tips, fellas. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. But make sure you join us again on next week's show at aflriverina.com.au. We'll see you then.